Hi, I'm Chris Robshaw, and we're here to talk about the breakdown. Today I'm joined with Conor O'Shea, Harlequins Director of Rugby, and Luke Pearce, Premiership Referee. As an attacking player, you want to make sure your breakdown is quick. As a defensive player, you want to make sure you slow that ball down so your defensive line can get into place. You want to see consistently applied laws at the breakdown that ensures that you get equal opportunity for both defence and attack to have rights to that ball and then the breakdown is freed up, the ball is freed up and we get the fluid game that we all want to see. It's the most important area of the game, so we need to reward illegal defence and penalise illegal defence. <laughs> tackler not rolling. Here the tackler has not rolled away which has given an unfair advantage to the defensive team to get in on the ball and to steal the ball. Illegal play. It's such a complex area, there are so many things happening, it's such a dynamic situation going on. We can see when a person is making an effort to roll away yeah. and you know when a player is just lying on a ball, creating no space and no opportunity. I think as referees we've got to take a no excuses policy with them really. If you put yourself in that position, you're only intended to slow that ball down. And it's that kind of consistency that players and coaches all want from the referee. I think it's clear, it can be quick ball, it can be slowed down, all in the fairness of the game. Tackle We're now going to look at the jackal situation, also known as a turnover, at a breakdown. We're doing a two-man tackle again. Down. He's then on the floor. I've then got a release. And then back on the ball, and I'm able to steal and compete for the ball. Tackle a release. So clear release there, so he's given everyone an opportunity, attacking and defending, to get a ball. Great example there of daylight, mm. but it only has to be a millimetre of daylight, and that's the difficulty. If a player makes a clear release, we can then play and reward him if he gets back on the ball. What we must make sure of is that an actual tackle has taken place. It's not a tackle until the ball carrier hits the ground. The tackle, the breakdown from this, flows everything, the offside line, the attacking cleaners, the defensive people, everything. Tackle the roll and hold it there. So in this scenario, we now talk about the gate and the correct entry through the ruck once the ruck is formed. As you again, you can see here, the defender has entered the ruck, he's formed the ruck with the attacker and he's stayed within the gate. The gate is formed from where the player's toes are to where the tackler's head is as well. So any player can legally enter the ruck through any angle as long as he comes through the feet or from the head. Where it becomes illegal from an attacking perspective is when you come across in front of the feet or in front of the head and take out a player from the side. So that's been a nice brief demonstration of the breakdown and we can just see how complex it really is. Yeah, get the breakdown right, get the game right, get it fluid and it's uh, the game we all want to see but I don't envy your job. Definitely and we can get more consistent as a group of referees then we let the players play, we keep the coaches happy and hopefully more tries scored in the game.